well, after about two years, my uh, HHO system in this little Suzuki, um, it's an SJ413 Jimny, but it's Samurai, basically. It's been trouble-free. The only thing I had to do to it, if you call it, let's say, very minor, this uh, gasket up here didn't seal quite perfect. I just put a couple pieces of very heavy trash can liner under there, like just shore up the gasket, make sure it's on tight. And you can see there's the production. It's not drawing many amps because that's how I have it set. And uh, but that's enough to give you a little more mileage when you crank it up a little more. You see that that amp meter in there? It's not showing many, ain't drawing too many amps. So. This thing's been good. This has been stone cold reliable. I never had to take it apart. Um, I use like the, what was it, the potassium KOH or whatever it was. I think it was. Um, and like, like it could draw up to about, I think, 20 some amps, 25, 30 amps. So I could put it way the hell out of here. You know, it's like drawing like. Not much. I mean, when the engine's revved up, maybe five amps. But it's enough that, you know, when I tested this, like I've been driving this car since, well, I got this in September of 1987. And it's got way over 200,000 miles on it. It still runs really great. I used to always put um, uh, upper cylinder lubricant in the gas, as I still do, Marvel Mystery Oil in the gas, uh, door lube in, a, in a, uh, the fluids. It's got... Um, Royal Purple transfer case and diff different uh, transmission and differential lube in there. It's freaking old, but it's not wrong with it, man. And uh, the only spot I had like a dent on was here. I just I, I used uh, rivets and um, panel adhesive, and I just put a plate over it. And it's truck bed lined, you know. So, but it's a it's a runner, man. It runs fine. Runs fine. Everything on it works. God, it's stone cold reliable. It starts up every time. And you know the good thing about that HHO is, say you didn't quite start your car in a while, and uh, you know how it is with these kind with the uh, fuel pump, the manual fuel pump. It takes you a little while to get the fuel up in there. Just flip that switch, and it'll produce HHO. It only works. Uh, with the ignition on. So you put turn the ignition on, you make sure the switch is on, and it'll start producing some HHO. And that HHO will feed in there, and it'll give it a shot of like some uh, hydrogen, basically. <laughs> it'll, that'll, that'll get it going. Things been, it's been a damn good car, though. I can tell you that right now, man. I always like this thing, and I'm, I'm a believer in basically keeping it stock. Yeah, it's it is. It's got the locker in the back. It's got the Firestone uh, Winter Force tires on the back, and the front's got some uh, um, extra track Douglas, which aren't bad. But uh, yeah, and this is the uh, that's a switch right down here for the uh, HHO we turn off and on here. It only works with the key, but it's it's been good, man. It's been good to go. The reason I don't like putting too much, you know, electrolyte in there, because I don't, it, it can draw a lot more amps, I can have it produce a lot more, but, you know, I found that this works, man, it did get about 10% better mileage, just doing this little bit, now this is on an, un, uh, it's just a carbureted um, vehicle, it's no computer, but um, I got this off of eBay, it's a 16 plate jobber, and the 16 plate is actually way oversized for this motor. It's only 1.3 liter, about 8, 8, 80 cubic inches, 81 cubic inches, something like that. So you didn't really need a 16 plate. I'm probably going to put a 21 plate on the El Camino. The only thing I have to do once in a while is fill up the bubbler. But basically that's like a, it's kind of a thing that maybe filters out some impurities. It's not. Sometimes it gets a little low after a while. It's, it's nothing to fill it up, though. It takes a long time to get low. This, I never really had to fill this up, man. It's just, I don't know. It seems like it just 
lasting and lasting and lasting. I just put a little more electrolyte in there because, um, you know, it's probably going to start pulling a little more amps. It's still way the hell under 10 amps. I mean, it's probably like 5 amps, maybe to pull, you know. Stone cold reliable, no problems, no leaks, no leaks in the unit, nothing. It's on here solid as all hell. You can see that big bracket on here. And you know what's cool about this thing when I set it up? Um, the engine vibration causes everything in there to vibrate in the unit itself. So that kind of shakes up everything. And maybe it helps a little bit with production because, you know, from, I don't even think this thing's pulling four amps. And that's pretty good production considering, right? That's a lot of production. If I was pulling 20 amps or something, that thing would be flying. But you know, when you're riding down the road, it's probably... Yeah, it's still, you know, it picks up a little bit. And it's got, besides the bubbler, it's got the one-way check valve, and it goes right in there. And I have this um, hose like epoxied in there and it's got like an angle so it kind of faces down and gets in there but you know after two years of use I didn't do shit with this damn thing so I know they make all these crazy claims about water powered cars and crap but they do do a little bit like especially if you don't have a computerized car that's electronically controlled where it's got an oxygen sensor which this doesn't have and you just got a plain carburetor they do work but this, this unit, there's been no problem with this damn thing. That's the, see, that's where my oxygen sensor will go. This is a later model one. It's an 85. Don't have one. So, probably going to put a stainless steel exhaust on here pretty soon. The whole thing all the way back. It's not really that noisy. The engine's more noisy than the exhaust. You know, it's not that necessary. Kind of kind of hear it a little bit. <laughs> it's not too much. So, yeah, got my uh, rebel flags all over the place. There's one here, there's one there. Uh, one up there and one on each side. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been in the locker. The locker's in here, man. Lock right. That's the one thing that makes this thing go like a son of a bitch, man. You don't even have to put it four-wheel drive. No problem. If some people think this shit's bullcrap, you know, even if it does a tiny, tiny bit, you know, for the amount of maintenance I got to do on a damn thing, which is basically nothing, once in a while I have to fill up this bubbler. This is the first time I added electrolyte into it for more than a year. Uh, okay, so I, I just got cut off because the battery ran out, but you know, the, uh, um, I just added a little electrolyte to it because I figured I could pump it up a little more because I was always running at real low amps. Um, now, I know like people, like engineers out there are going to say, oh yeah, if you can't get something for nothing, you can't get free energy. What this is doing, this is not providing free energy. What this is doing, the HHO is actually um, causing... Uh, the hydrogen is actually causing a more complete burn of the existing fuel. That's what's going on. It's not adding more energy. And, you know, if you got a well-managed, uh, modern, uh, close this hood, it's starting to rain, computerized car, I don't think it's just the oxygen sensor that's the problem. I think it's, you know, it's the fact that the car is so damn efficient. But these older cars are not that super efficient. With a carburetor and stuff, um, they might be running just a little bit fat because, you know, like, it rich. So you got some acceleration. Even though you got the accelerator pump and all the different metering valves in there or whatever the hell it is that, you know, give it a little more gas when you need to, they run, they're not like fine-tuned like a computer car that's like today. So... You know, that's probably why they work better on the old shit, because the old shit is not as efficient. But it's kind of cool making the old shit more efficient than it normally is for like, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks. And it's like, you know, if it, say this whole 
thing broke, this HHO, which is ain't nothing to it, just some wire, few wires on it, or a relay, um, and some hoses. Uh, you know, your car's still going to run, right? It does lower the emissions. I'm like, what the hell, right? This bad boy, this thing just runs and runs and runs, man. So, anyway, I'm very happy with it. Just want to figure out how to put this out because I've had it two years now about zero problems. I use this at least a few times a week, so it's been good. It's been good. And by the way, I'm putting uh see that was out there uh breaking the bolts on the uh catalytic converter uh clamps. Yeah, I get it under there with the uh propane, get them cherry red. They finally broke loose. It was doing that about 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Um you know, it's been raining off and on here in Florida, but <laughs> I figure I'm going to save those clamps versus just throw them away. But uh, this old bad boy is going to get a HHO in it, too. A 21 plate. So we'll see how that runs later. Well, it'll be a few months down the road, but we'll get it done. <laughs>